All right, here we go. D.L. Hughley, welcome back. Yeah. Last time I saw you, the world was normal. Oh, man, 2019, we did not know how good we had no. it in 2019. No, COVID. COVID, COVID came in and messed everything up. Yeah, it did. Everything yeah, up. It did. But it, but it really showed, like, I literally think the worst virus known to man is man. Mm. And the worst strain of that virus is white men. I'm telling you, man. Really? Nothing worse than white men? No, my, my, <laughs> let me, the worst strain of that virus, because we can work for people, but we ain't, we're not going to mess up the world and the environment's not going to be horrible and like fish are coming back, like dolphins. <laughs> Like it's like, the, it's like goats in the street now like, and all that. It's like America went, Whoo, this nigga's not here right now. It's like, but it, it's, it's really amazing how, and for all those people who said dumb shit like, I wish I had been able to spend more time with my family. Fuck that. <laughs> Isn't it horrible? It was, it was great at first. Yeah. Well, ain't you ready to go back to work? Ain't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. I'm getting tired of my family. Man. <laughs> Like, remember when the uh, Surgeon General came on and he said, well, you know, uh, black people are predisposed to this because they drink and they and they smoke and they do drugs. You can't tell me that I got to stay home and I can't smoke and drink and do drugs. <laughs> like, <laughs> either I'm going to be a murderer or alcoholic. <laughs> and at least if I drink, I can go to those meetings and get the fuck out the house. <laughs> Whoever said <laughs> you safer at home wasn't at my house. Oh, yeah. I started, uh, you know, my vacation these days is staying in a hotel for a couple of days just to a get away from the family. Absolutely. <laughs> like a local hotel. Absolutely. They're looking at my license like, you live around here. What are you, what are you doing here? Who thought the Courtyard Marriott was going to be spectacular? <laughs> the Holiday Inn Express was going to be spectacular. I know, right? <laughs> oh, well, let's go ahead and get into it. 2020 election is coming up. Sure. If it's actually going to happen, you think it's going to happen? Of course it gets. Well, constitutionally, it has to happen. It has to happen, but you can't really do traditional voting anymore. No, well, you never had to. What What, what is the problem? I, th I That's actually good point. Think I see what you're saying. You yeah. never had to. Like, I never, I don't understand. Jury duty is mandatory. There are certain aspects of being an American citizen that are mandatory. Like, if you want to become an American citizen from somewhere else, you, there's certain things you have to know. Mm -hmm. If you are an American citizen, there's certain things you have to do, like pay taxes and be, you know, be available for jury duty. Mm -hmm. I think that voting should be mandatory. Yeah. Someone told me in some country, what, what country is it where you actually get fined for not voting? I don't know. I only live in the country which, of which, California. Which, which, which country? Yeah. Certain certain countries. Is it Australia? It might be Australia where you get fined if you don't vote. I think that there was a time in this country where you had to have military service. Like in, in, in there are some countries now you have to dedicate a part of your life to military service. I think that in America you should have to vote, and uh, it, it should be a, a, it's the, it's a requirement of citizenship. And there are people who try to make it harder to vote. And yep. I think uh, the idea, the notion that um, you want to minimize the, the vote and some people get to uh, get to shirk their responsibility by not being part of it. Like, you think it's dope to go, I didn't have anything to do with this because I didn't. But decisions are being made whether you make them or not. Either you vote or you don't vote. But either, that, either way, that counts. Yeah, I was actually right. Uh, in Australia, first-time offenders... The, the fee is $20 sure. if you don't vote, and then $50 if it's an additional, additional we get fee. We get more than that for not driving in the diamond lane. Like, like, <laughs> right. like it's more expensive yeah. to, to not have two motherfuckers in your car than to, yeah. than to vote. And I think, in, uh, I think in Florida, they just struck down a law where felons had to pay some sort of fee right. in order to, to, be vote, able to vote, but they, they struck that down. I, I, let me ask you something. If voting is not important, why do some people try to make it so hard for you to do it? Right. It's clearly important. It should important. be convenient. Yeah. It should be convenient. It should be an app. It, app every, every aspect of American life has become more and more convenient. Why is voting not that way? Because they don't want people to vote. Because they don't. Right. Because they want them disaffected. They want them uh, apathetic. And then they get to do what they want. And ultimately, uh, 
I think that it, it is the the cheapest thing you can do is be a part of of saying what you believe. I think that you shouldn't be able to go on uh, uh, social media and not use your real name. Hmm, right. I think that's a big problem. I don't think you should be anonymous. Yeah. No. I don't think that jury should be able to have to vote in secret. I don't think the the Oscar committee should have a curtain. America's problem is curtains. <laughs> America's problem is that pe too many people get to do what they do under the cloak of secrecy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you're right. The Grammys, the Oscars, Everything. you don't know who voted for whom. Right. The, yeah, court cases. I mean, Supreme Court judges, sure. you know who voted for right. what, which That's is the way right it should opinions. be. Yeah. Social media, I've said this before. If all the trolls out there had to register themselves and have an address associated they Troll, would trolling would just go away. At, but I think the same thing about grand juries and juries. Mm, yeah. Why do you, why do you have to why do you have to have anonymity to say what you believe? You don't have to have an, anonymity to do it. I don't have to do it. You know, uh, uh, you know, the political figures don't have to do it. Why do you get something that we don't that, that most of us don't get? Right, and you and I as public figures, we don't have anonymity. No. Everything we say can get traced back to us Absolutely. for decades now. Absolutely. So whatever I say, I know I have to stand behind right. it. I can't say like, oh no, let me just switch screen names right. or whatever. No. Whatever I say, good or bad, I have to stand behind it. And if and if you are, if you if you're willing, listen, I don't uh necessarily uh I haven't been always <laughs> let that's suffice it to say people don't always like the things I say but they know I said them. Mm -hmm. And you know what you'll never hear me say? Oh, my social media person did it. Or this <laughs> right. motherfucker, if, if somebody put it under my name and it was true, I said it. Now, somebody could ascribe something to me I didn't say, and I'll say that. But in terms of blaming it for somebody uh, on somebody else, I think we're a nation of cowards, and we pretend to have... If, if something is a deeply held belief, why am I ashamed of it? Yeah, yeah. And I think people also are scared to evolve and change their stance based on new information. They sometimes have to stubbornly stand behind certain or the, things. Or they're cowards. People are, are afraid to say the things they say yeah. out loud. And I think that that should be a tenet of America too. Freedom of speech is great, but it has to be backed up by a certain modicum of courage. Well, well I'll tell you like with me, since our last time uh, we interviewed, I made a statement about reparations sure you know what i'm talking about i do okay i said uh you know i fully support reparations for african americans uh possibly in the form of a free education or here's the thing when they say reparations it's already happened in america the japanese got it the slaveholders got it people who own slaves native americans got, got it. reparations the native americans got casinos yeah but ultimately, everyone was paid except the people who the damage was done to. Right. Well, I just want to say this. I, I put that statement out there. Me having college education, I know that I've made millions of dollars because of my college education. Something that you hold on to and it pays off through the course of your career. That's how I look at it. And I, and I said, well, I don't think there's going to be cash reparations. I don't think the, company, the, uh, the country could afford it based on the number of African-Americans in this country and so forth. But recently, I said, you know something? I said this before, but then COVID-19 came around, and at the drop of a hat, the U.S. came up with trillions of dollars. Sure. So I said, you know something? I admit that I was wrong. My stance on cash reparations was actually wrong because obviously the country has it if they wanted it. They, just, they, they just don't want to spend they, it on, on the descendants of slaves. Even if, even if you didn't give somebody money, uh, for college, what if they got a home loan or a small business loan or a tax break or tax breaks? Yeah, there are too many ways to. If you got, we we got trillions of dollars to do things to make up for things, but for for the, to make up for the sin of arrogance, but not for the sin of of enslaving human beings. Yeah, and that's and that's amazing to me. Like whereas you benefited uh, from a college education. Somebody else might benefit from a tax break. Somebody else might benefit yeah. from a home loan yeah. or a small business loan. Sure. And and I think there are too many ways to repay your debt to, to, to get stuck on the fact 
uh, the, the Italians got reparations for being lynched in New Orleans in the 1980s under Reagan. Hmm. I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. The Italians got it. So if you, why is it that you went to the 1980s to pay people who were lynched in the 1800s, but, but you skipped past us? So you can do it if you want to do it. My mother always said, you, uh, you, you, you don't have time to do it right, but you have time to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. And I had no problems admitting that I was wrong. Uh, I would rather admit to being wrong than admit to not evolving. Right. right. That's how I look at it. Right. And uh, I, I never knew that suddenly at the drop of a hat, you could drop trillions of dollars sure. and send everyone $1,200 in this sure. country. Now, you and I did not get this. Sure. And that's okay. But the people who needed it got it. For the most part. But it was money they already paid anyway. The government became J.G. Wentworth. <laughs> 8776 now. <laughs> the government all of a sudden became J.G. Wentworth. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's not, and let's let's be clear, it was not, uh, it was not for us. It was so that the economy wouldn't implode. Right. Right. Because honestly, the stock market being where it is right now makes no sense to me. It, it makes perfect sense. It does it because people make money feast or famine. Yeah. What they what they can't make money is uncertainty. Yeah. Bad, good. I got it. Yeah. This I don't. Right. And the stock market is geared towards what's going to happen, not what's happening right now. Or what they what they know to be certainty or a certain level of certainty is built in there there are people like People make money off foreclosures. There mm -hmm. are employers right now who take insurance on their employees because they know they have it and they know what they do. They can make money, large employers. So there's a way to make money off almost everything. Yeah. The stock market is kind of baked into that. Yeah, Mo most billionaires in America made more money during this Absolutely. crash. Absolutely. Most billionaires. Jeff Bezos is predicted to be a trillionaire right. in the next, like, 15 years or something Absolutely. like that. Everyone else who panicked <laughs> ended up losing money. Or who was in the wrong business. Who was in the wrong business. Yeah. You know, we're, we're lucky enough where all my employees are still employed. Sure. I didn't lay anybody off. I didn't lower anyone's salary. Everyone has their health insurance. Uh, we've managed to stabilize. I've had to switch around the business. Right. And I feel like anyone in this position who says, okay, instead of, saying, woe is me, I'm going to figure out how to switch the business up, which which we did. We figured out how to do it. But you had an remotely. ability to do it. Airlines, you know what's interesting. Airlines can't do it. They can't do it. They can't do it. Hotels can't do can't it. Can't do it. You know, Warren Buffett sold out all his airline stock right. at a loss, which he never does. Right. When he did that, I said, oh, the airlines are fucked. Right. <laughs> the airlines and, and, are and screwed. And here's the thing they did for the airlines they would never do for us. The airlines got bailed out in 9-11. And, and they got bailed out now, recently, most recently. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one airline, I think Southwest Airlines didn't take the bailout. But look how they make us feel. They go, um, uh, you know, you guys are gripped in the system and no one's, if, if an airline said, who, who was flush up until this, this pandemic, said they needed assistance from the government or they would be broke in, 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 by June, what do you think a single family household or families would do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if Americans' families live from paycheck to paycheck, then American corporations live from bailout to bailout. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, because most corporations are, you know, credited out to the max. Sure. To and the why max. didn't those corporations take loans out? Well, some did. No, but but why wouldn't why wouldn't that have been our default position? Hey, you can get a great loan, take that out. Because they want to be able to keep the money and pass the profits off to their shareholders. Exactly. So I, I just I don't understand. So they gave the the, the 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 biggest form of welfare is corporate welfare welfare. But they'll demonize the people that look like like me. Or the people that look like uh, uh, you know someone else brown or poor, 
but not these 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 corporate raiders who kind of just do what they want. Yeah, most of the the small business loans went to these large chains. Like remember how Shake Shack and all these yeah. companies got that money yeah. now? Some of those corporations gave money back, but a lot of them said nah. But only only under pressure. Under pressure. Yeah. Yeah, most of them said, "Hey, I got a fiduciary responsibility to my shareholders, so I'm not giving this money right. back." Listen, if if you receive money from us, you shouldn't be able to fire your workers in two years, for two years. Mm, yeah. Because that money is to make their shareholders whole. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't even bother. We didn't even bother going for these loans. No. Our business was relatively unaffected, so we said we're not even going to try. But you sell something. You have something. Uh, my mother and father always said, have something to sell when cotton and corn won't. Right. That's a pimp corn, ain't it? <laughs> <It's>, I'm telling <laughs> you. Fillmore and Slim said that. <laughs> and when you have, American pimp. <laughs> right. What you have is something to sell when cotton and corn won't. When commodities won't sell, you the, have... The news. The news. Well, not even the news. Media. An obtrusive kind of news. Yeah. I want to know shit that... The, 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 you ain't going to get Vlad on ABC. None no. of that shit. Or MSNBC or Fox or CNN. Yeah. This is some shit that people are connected to. Right. And they can get it for free on their phones. Sure. They don't have to have a Netflix account sure. or cable or anything else like that. This is why most people that interview with us, they're amazed when they walk down the street and people are constantly mentioning their interview. I'm us. not amazed. I'm frightened. So. Frightened. <laughs> <laughs> well, recently, uh, Biden uh, did an interview sure. with Charlemagne. Sure. And he said, uh, if you're thinking about who to vote for, you ain't black. I agree. I agree. Listen, I don't I don't care that you're a Republican. Um, there are Republicans like if uh, if Colin Powell had run for president, he got a lot of the black vote. We're not talking about ideological differences. We're talking about Donald Trump is a morally bankrupt, vile human being who's done what he's done to black and brown and women and gays and children all for the service of himself. And if you fuck with him, I can't fuck with you. I can't think of a black Trump supporter, not black Republican, black Trump supporter that I think is redeemable in any way. Well, if you're a black Republican, aren't you a black Trump supporter? I think that I know black uh, Trump, well, Colin Powell was a black uh, Republican. He's not a black Trump supporter. Okay, that's a good example. I'll give you that. I think you can be uh, a Republican. We're not talking about ideological. We're talking about the kind. Don't be mad at me because I still support Joe Biden. When you let a man grab somebody pussy, you 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 you. The, at the same time, Joe Biden was saying uh, you ain't black. This president was, was was refusing to hang the portrait of the first black president in the Oval Office, which is a forty year tradition. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't even the most racist thing I think I saw. And I think that if black Trump supporters were as angry at the, the, the murders of uh, Ahmaud Arbery as they are about Trump insulting them, we would have something. Yeah, yeah, I would tend to agree. Uh, I would tend to agree. The fact that he didn't hang the portrait of Obama. And you know, the one thing white supremacists love to do is hang niggas in any way they can, so I don't understand it. I'm, I'm you, gonna you, leave that one alone. You're uh, more angry, you're more angry about you being insulted, literally. This, this, we're talking about men are, I heard from Tim Scott when Ahmaud Arbery was killed, he made a bullshit uh, statement in the per Post Courier or whatever local paper they have in South Carolina. But I guarantee you this, when, when he got insulted, he made sure we heard what he said in all kinds of media outlets. And I can't think of one black Trump supporter that I find redeemable. Black Trump supporters are more welcome at a Trump rally than at their own family reunions. Why? <laughs> Why? Right. I can't think of one. What, I'm going to fuck with uh, Diamond and Silk or Rocks and Blunts or whatever the fuck their name is. <laughs> okay. I'm going to fuck with Candace Owens. Kanye. I'm going to fuck with Kanye West. They, uh, if, the sh if, you know, if the shoe booty fits, wear it. I can't think of one that I, that, that I think even is remotely redeemable. So I don't care where it came from. I, I think that you are you you are, and 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 I don't even care that Joe Biden. I'm I'm willing to to accept the notion that a 75 year old white man from the Northeast, like Biden is, and a 70 something white man 
from the Northeast, like Trump is, might have racist views. Yep. I'm not even negating that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lyndon Bain Johnson was racist. Abraham Lincoln didn't have a love of black people. Earl Warren didn't. But somehow, the agenda moved forward. I can't imagine that, that if Trump were a useful racist, we'd have a different conversation. But he's a dumb, inept racist. He, he's, people say, well, black people are working. The, the unemployment rate is historically low. The unemployment rate during slavery was pretty low, too. <laughs> but they hated the, the, the slaves had all the slaves right. were all employed. Every slave worked. Right. So how the fuck? Like, no. what is he? The, like when people no, talk no one people, was in the unemployment line no, for slavery. Even babies. Yeah. Like everybody tell me uh, about how his his crime bill. He does a couple of things. He lets a few niggas go, but then he appoints judges that are inclined to do the same things that he's freeing them for. So how the fuck is that anything other than, that's like trying to fill up a bucket with a hole in it. Yeah. Remember Kanye said slavery was a choice. Kanye West is, uh, I, I, like, I, and I, I, he's a tremendously talented dude, but a morally bankrupt human being. When albums didn't sell, this nigga sold God to yeah, niggas. Yeah, he sold God. And, and, and I, I just can't think of one uh, that I, name me one of them. One of them. If, if you were a Trump supporter, you got kicked off niggas' Facebook pages. <laughs> and not, not just because I know black Republicans. I could have voted for Colin, pa Colin Powell. I could have done it. I would have voted for Colin Powell. Why didn't he run? And I ain't talking about your, I'm talking about this man right here. How the fuck are you going to be mad at me for supporting Joe Biden when a girl gets killed and you say they're all the same? When you told Barack Obama that he was uh, uh, not born here, when you told the Central Park Seven, the Central Park Five, Five yeah. that that they were, they should have been hung, when mm -hmm. you wouldn't let rent to black people, I'm I'm not I'm, I'm I'm only in one business, the business of being humane. Do you think that Trump would be pushing for these uh, uh, states to open up if he didn't know it was old people, black and brown people dying? He wouldn't. Right and. The only thing he could say during his election is that the economy increased, but because of this, it went back to the level sure. that it was at when he first started, he's, when he, he first joined office. So he can't say that. That's why no. he's pushing for it, because he knows that the economy is in the toilet during election time, he's out of here. Right. And, and what does it matter if I lose a couple of niggas and old people and brown people? What does it matter? Are there any black people in Trump's cabinet anymore after Amorosa well, was kicked out? And... Look, look at all the... Uh, ben Carson. Ben Carson, yes, sir. But look at all the black people. Like, I'm not one of those people that goes, I'm pragmatic. Black people do not vote for aspirations in general. What well, do you think that, uh, you know, after Biden said what he said, did he said that the, the black vote ain't free? Did he say that before, though? He did say that before. Uh, and he said it again after Biden said what he said. The black vote ain't free. What is it you want? We should be able to have the the, the first off, we're a mono, we're not a monolith. How can one race speak uh, pay people speak for somebody <laughs> for a race? How can one human being, one black person, speak for a race of people that got the baby and Barack Obama? Right. Well, reparations would be one way, but that wouldn't be everybody's way. Right. And and reparations only apply to descendants of slaves. It doesn't apply to Jamaicans, you know, everybody or Africans. Here, everybody here, even 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 West Indians who have been here for a long time were descendants of slaves. Yeah, but not in America. I, I'm not, I'm not going to parse out like that. I think if your right. ass is black, <laughs> you 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 have suffered the lashings of slavery. And so there is an idea that you even if you're from the West Indies, there is uh, a, a, a kinship that we all share. Now, if you say somebody's from Haiti or somebody's from the West Indies, okay. But ultimately, all of us have suffered from the slings and arrows, the lash of slavery. And, and, and either we're going to do something about it or we're not. But I think what's important to me, 
I just don't understand why people don't don't get how horrible this is. A hundred thousand Americans will be dead. Over a hundred thousand Americans. Mm-hmm. By the time this interview airs, that's acceptable to you? Yeah, I think what's happening right now when you see these parties in Atlanta and Missouri and Houston and stuff like that, both black and white, we're not going to say that it's only a certain type of people sure. that are that are out there risking their lives and risking the lives of their families by taking home, you know, COVID-19 and then getting their grandparents sick and so forth like that. I even saw Floyd Mayweather at a club in, a, in Arizona this past weekend in a video. Uh, which to me is kind of crazy because well, most people Floyd didn't read the instructions, so it's not <laughs> he can't read the instructions, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever the talk- CDC <laughs> issue warnings for one, what the fuck is this? It's the it's the invitation what, to a party, what Floyd. Are, what are these squiggles? <laughs> what are all these fucking X's? <laughs> What's this half circle right, little missing part, right? right? right. Oh shit! This is. <laughs> <laughs> we invited to the VIP section. It's fuck. I I I do not understand. Honestly, here here it is. Do you really believe that anybody else, America leads the world in cases and deaths? Right. Although Brazil's quickly catching up. They'll never catch up with us. I don't know. No. I don't know. They're catching they up. And if they. Okay. And, and Trump just blocked travel from Brazil. He blocked it from, from uh, China, too. China as well, So yeah. let's see. Uh, the only... <laughs> so we're we're catching up the... The only time us, us being equal with Brazil would matter if it was soccer. It ain't. Right. It's fucking COVID. We have, we have, we have more population than we have. Yep. We're a wealthy country. What, what, what America has shown... Is that what we've shown is that hatred and racism matter more than anything else. Yeah. Th- these people are dying because Trump supporters want him and don't care what he does. People are literally dying because they say it's okay to. When he said, I could kill somebody on Fifth Avenue and still have my supporters, he could kill 100,000 people and he still have supporters. Yeah, I feel you. Recently, the whole Doja Cat thing uh-huh. came about. I interviewed Doja Cat about a year ago. After our interview, she DM'd me and said that she wanted to scrap the whole interview. And when I didn't say yes, she she blocked me. So that that was the end of my uh, my relationship with with Doja Cat. And in the interview, she touched on her having a South African father. Sure, she is biracial. Uh, so your family is South African? My dad is from South Africa, Durban, South Africa. Okay. Um, I'm from, I'm just from here, from Cali. I'm from, uh, I was born in Tarzana, and then I immediately moved to New York. I moved to the Bronx. And I lived there for like five years. Uh, and then I moved back to the Valley. But she's someone that could pass for white depending on who who she's dealing sure. with. So some videos came out where she was on Tiny Chat basically talking with racists, saying the N-word, laughing at racist jokes, and so forth. And then they brought back this old song that she had posted uh, five years ago on her SoundCloud called Didn't Do Nothing, which is a racist term that originally was started on a 4chan message board when people were making fun of uh, Michael Brown's murder. Sure. And it's actually interesting because I remember I'm like, I've heard this term before. Where did I hear this term before? And a year ago, I interviewed Talib Kweli. Right. And after the interview, David Duke started tweeting about the interview. Right. And he was like, oh, DJ Vlad interviews didn't do nothing Talib Kweli. Right. This is a term used by racists and white sure. supremacists. Sure. And she made a song called sure. Didn't Do Nothing. She also spoke very badly about black hair. Did you hear about that one? Yes. 
it, and the list kind of goes on and on. It, it, it is a, it is inconvenient at best to be s- someone that people make their mind out up about before you utter a sound. That they already know who you are and what you represent, and it it takes it takes humanity to acknowledge that. And I think that when people are young, um, um, artists they want to get on, they want to be popular, they do the things that they think works, and in the end, it comes back to hunt. Yeah, I mean, she said there was a, a tweet that resurfaced said. Thinking about being black can make any sensible person depressed. Like, just think about it. When it, when, when being white makes so much more sense, life would have value. It, let, let me, that is crazy. It is. It is. If you had a choice, being black is like wearing tight shoes, so you feel good when you take them off. Uh, okay. It is. It is. You know it. You know that they know it. You understand it. And I can't explain somebody who takes a break. I can't explain somebody. I can say this, that it, is, it means more to me to make the people I look like proud. Not all of them, but to make the people I look like at least understand where I'm coming from or, 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 can, or can make a reason argument that I'm at least uh, invested in what I'm talking about as opposed to doing what I could do just to make people like me. There's nothing I'm going to be able to... You know what's funny about being black? It's, it's this. There is more evidence that Jesus looked more like me than that than the picture uh, that is classically displayed. 100%. Right. Because of the region. Right. The it, Middle it, East. It couldn't be. Couldn't be, couldn't be. There were no pale people in that region. It, absolutely. None. It was but, just, yeah. The but mi- imagine, go to the Middle East now. Right. <laughs> he looked more like me than Brad Pitt from Legends of the Fall. Yes. But imagine a world that co-ops Jesus. That says, imagine a world that says, I, I read a book called Guns, Germs, and Steel, and it talks about how, uh, you know, it was by this cat from UCLA, and he talked about, how they had, uh, you know, the colonists had, they were able to colonize because they had these g- guns and they had these germ- these technology and these domesticated animals uh, and steel that they fashioned into weapons that nobody ever said. You know what else they did? They took Jesus and they made him look like him. It, uh, even when black people pray, we close our eyes and pray. We close our eyes and envision a white man saving us. Yeah. I mean, how many grandmothers, black grandmothers, have a picture of a white Jesus on their mantle? So let me ask you something. If I co-opt who you look up to, yeah. if I say he, the, who you look up to looks like that, it changes who you look down on. Yeah, 100%. And you, so I, I just, I don't, I don't understand. I, it is inconvenient at best to be black. But it also... Is who you are. It is, and I'm not saying that that somebody else can't have a different opinion, but I'm not going to lie to you and pretend like I'm something I'm not so you can accept me. You know, biblically, we are supposed to be made in God's image, but Europeans made them in theirs. You so so I remember what does it say about you as a nation or a, a culture? or a civilization that has to make the creator in your image to have to, to be able to worship him. Well, there's an underlying reason, right? If you tell everyone that God looks like you sure. and not like them, that puts you on a pedestal. Sure. And it puts other people down. It makes it makes me worship you. Yeah. yeah. This is why I have I don't agree with everything the nation of Islam does, but I do respect what they've accomplished sure. over the years. Uh, you know, I, I've interviewed Nation of Islam members. I've used Nation of Islam for security. Like, you know, like what they've done is to tear down this this thing of the white Jesus, the blue eyed Jesus, sure. and so forth like that, and and say, look, if you're going to worship somebody, at least have worship someone that looks like you. Sure. The Last Dance recently aired. You watched it? Yeah, I did. 
I just interviewed Greg Hodges. Sure. He actually has a history of, he grew up in a family, not not the Black Panthers, but a similar type of right. organization that his mother's. He basically had Angela Davis <laughs> living with him, Afro and all. He would go out and hand out flyers. He dealt with redlining as a kid and sure. voter suppression and stuff like that. When Jordan joined the Bulls, well, when he joined the Bulls, Jordan was already there. He tried to get Jordan to speak out against social issues, and it went absolutely nowhere. Of course he did. Listen, I, I saw the last dance, and I got to tell you, um, um, it, it, a couple of things it made me, I think. One was that um, Jordan was a single-minded doggedly determined human being mm -hmm. and that he axed out a lot of humanity in the process. I remember how Kobe used to get derided because he had that thing he told on Shaq. Remember that? Mm -hmm. The difference between Kobe and Shaq, uh, Kobe and Jordan is there was no social media. There was not this intrusive, obtrusive thing. Because if we knew what Jordan was doing when he was doing it, I don't know that he'd be loved like he is. No. No. And it was it was a very interesting part that they touched on a little bit in the documentary where there was a black politician that was running against Jesse sure. Helms. Jesse Helms, who's a notorious racist right. in North white Carolina. Buy tennis shoes too. He said Republicans buy tennis shoes, buy right. tennis shoes too. Right. His mother, his own mother said, just take a picture with this man who's running against Jesse Helms. That's all you got to do. He said, nope. nope. And, and that's, that's, that's the difference. I think that the worst thing that happened to us is getting to know people. And, 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 and I remember things that were really telling. When Jordan, when the interview was first coming out, Jordan was like, this is going to make people hate me. But you wrote the interview. You directed the interview. You paid for the interview. You paid for the documentary. He paid for the documentary. He paid for the, it. Was his. Well, it thought, was his. No, I thought it was ESPN. But he, it was his. He, he made it happen. It was he. He was a creative thrust behind it. Right. Well, he agreed to do the interview, which was the only way this was going to happen. Right. Right. So I get to decide what happened. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. And if I get to decide what you say about me, it's going to be the dopest shit ever. <laughs> right. Well, because here's what's interesting. When I, when I interviewed Craig. When the Bulls and the Lakers were in the NBA Finals, right. he spoke to Jordan and Magic about not taking the floor as a protest to social injustices. Okay. Jordan told him he was crazy. Magic Johnson said, that's too extreme. Ultimately, neither one of them. Sure. You know, neither team decided to go along right. with this. Later on, when they went to go visit the White House, Craig Hodges wore a daishiki and gave a letter to George H.W. Bush outlining what he thinks is a problem with the country and how Bush could potentially change it. At 32 years old, after just winning a championship, no team in the NBA wanted to hire him. Yep. He was like the Kaepernick before Kaepernick. Uh, I, I, I think... Uh... I would say that that was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but but okay, I, I can see that I, as well. I, I think that 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 they're principled men who, irrespective of the things they have to lose, are who they are. Uh, and I think that there are men who are very young and could do like, and to me, the Kobe Kobe uh, 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 Bryant is my favorite athlete of all time. Really. Of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Over Muhammad Ali. He's my favorite athlete of all time. But why would you put Kobe over Muhammad Ali? I wouldn't. Now I'm going to tell you why. But the most principled athlete of the modern era is is LeBron James. Of the modern era. Yeah. And before him, it was obviously, uh, it was the Jim Browns, it was Muhammad Ali, and it was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Why does Kareem not even, why didn't he up until recently have a statue in front of the Staples Center? Wayne Gretzky 
never won a fucking thing for L.A. He had one. It's because he was a black man whose name was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar because of the things he did. But you put Kareem over Jordan. Over Jordan? As an athlete? Let, who, who, who scored more points? I know. You put this on your Instagram. Hold on. Let me pull this up because you, you did a breakdown. Over jo I, well, I put Kobe over Jordan, too, but so we're going to just have some controversy. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Hold on. Here we go. So Kareem Abdul-Jabbar versus Jordan. Both had six uh, NBA championships. Uh, Kareem had three NCAA championships. Jordan's one. He had six NBA MVPs over Jordan's five. He had three NCAA MVPs. Jordan had zero. Um, you know, so forth and so forth. No, he had more points. Kareem. He had more field goals. He had more rebounds. He had more assists. You know what Kareem uh, did that Jordan never did? Never. Two things. One, he won without his nucleus. Kareem won without uh, uh, Magic before, right? Yeah. He scored all those points and only made one three-pointer. Yeah, he's not a three-point guy. If he could make three-pointers, uh, he, he scored all that without making... And the only reason that we don't talk about him like we talk about Jordan is because of his name and he wasn't media-friendly or sad. Right, and we talked about this. There is Muhammad Ali who changed his name as well to a, right, Muslim, to a right. Muslim name. But Muhammad Ali was very media friendly. But Muhammad Ali wasn't accepted by America until when? Till he got sick. Right. Till he was weak and they they saw him as him. When he ran up those stairs shaking that torch and everybody ran home and blew their pilot lights out, then they accepted him. <laughs> blew their pilot lights out. They went, out. oh wait, this thing ain't gonna burn my house. That's, that's when they accepted him. But it's no, it's no, there's no, there's no disputing what I've scored more points than you. I've won more championships, as many championships as you. I've done it on different teams without the same coach. I have, uh, I have done it at a college level. I've, I've, I've won more uh, NBA. Like, I just, I don't understand what the predicate is other than, Kareem didn't have a shoe. And ain't nobody gonna wear that shelter. And uh, D <laughs> Run DMC ain't gonna be your <laughs> They can't be your dude. Yeah. Um Jor Jordan was was one of those where had he had the social the social aspect of what he did, he'd be a very different entity. But I think that at the time he reached a status that no black entertainer had ever reached. No black athlete. An athlete and an entertainer, I kind of equate as, me, as sort was, of the same thing. Because at the end of the day, you're entertaining, there right? Was one On point, that court. There was one point where Muhammad Ali was the most recognized athlete or human being on the face of the earth. Okay. He didn't have a shoe. Yeah. So you, that, 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 that's not Jordan commercially. And athletically, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, can't, you can't, you can't deny what he was able to do. Right. So I'm, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm telling you, for me, for me, we use math to say things, and then we, 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 we use our hearts to do other things. If you're asking me the greatest uh, NBA player ever, statistically, you can't say it wasn't him. Right, but what I'm saying is, even if you say athletes, no one reached a height that Jordan reached in terms of marketability, money, being recognized, being considered great overall, he reached a level that no one reached. So I think that he was very scared to not lose that place that he had. By the time LeBron came around, he said, okay, well, Jordan already did that. I could do that or and then more. maybe he was just a principal man. Boy, here's the thing. The you're making the argument you make is true, except that I think that Muhammad Ali was more beloved than almost any athlete who ever existed. Right. Well, Muhammad Ali actually went to prison for his ideals. Right. And, name and, name one athlete in the modern era that will go to prison for their ideals. The stuff they believe. Kaepernick won't do it. No. As much but, as people love Kaepernick, he will not go to prison for his ideals. Right. And so, and he also was known, there were people that didn't speak English that knew, 
Muhammad Ali was known around the world. Around, do you know how many people named Muhammad because of him? Not, yeah. not, I ain't talking about the God, the yeah. deity. Because of him. Because of him, yeah. So yeah. Jordan had more commercial success and more, uh, you know, more optic success. But clearly, Muhammad Ali ascended to a level. And so the argument that you're making is true, but I just think that if we knew who Muhammad Ali was, and at the end of the day, we still fucked with him when he died. After the, after <laughs> Muhammad Ali survived going to prison, he survived uh, staying out of the Vietnam War. <laughs> Michael Jordan's reputation might not survive the last dance. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it might. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he called Larry Bird a bitch. <laughs> he called <laughs> teammates hoes. <laughs> Listen, he survived. Like Muhammad Ali should survive. His shit might not survive a documentary. Right. So, I don't know. Right. <laughs> it might not survive the, the the COVID shit. Well, uh, Tyson and Holyfield are talking about getting back in the sure. ring. Sure. Do you know either of these guys? I know them both. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Holyfield is 57. Yeah. Tyson is 53. Right. Both in very good shape. Sure. For for 57 and 53 year old dude. Yes. They could whoop any, like, I give them 40. But you think they're going to beat Tyson Fury and... No. No, but they're not, but they're not, but they're not talking about fighting those guys. No. Like, Holyfield's talking about fighting like Riddick Bowe. <laughs> you know, guys yeah. their own age. Riddick Bowe doesn't even know his name is Riddick Bowe. So, like, so he's going to beat the shit out of Parkinson's victim. He's got Parkinson's? No, I'm talking about... He's going to beat the shit out of people in the nursing home. Right. I, I, I'll beat the shit out of anybody in the villages right now. Like, he can really say, like, everybody in scooters and shit, I run the yard, but that's, that's not... When I saw Mike Tyson, I was like, that is an awesome display of, t of power. Yeah. For a 53-year-old. And he could beat... He could beat probably anybody past the top 15. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm just saying, probably. But you're not beating those young dudes with no bull. That's a video. Well, right. And you're talking about, if you're talking about 12 rounds, you got to go in that butter bean four-round league right. like, <laughs> in order to, to really right. fight. You're not, you're not doing 12 rounds at 57. Let me tell you something. When you pass 40, if somebody hits you, you're missing some days from work. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga might win the fight, but he ain't going to the press conference. <laughs> you won't see him for a year right. or two. <laughs> Where, where's the at? That nigga's convalescing. Stop. Right. And, have you ever had conversations with Tyson? Of course. I've had one, and he just kept asking me the same question over and over again. And it was really kind of freaking me out a little bit because it's Mike Tyson, so you want to have to keep answering every right. time. But he's just not wired normally. But anybody, and, and, and Evander and, and, and Mike and, and Tommy Hearns, and I don't care how great you were, the problem with them dudes is they beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. Like Floyd know exactly where he is. Yeah. I just interviewed Zab Judah. He's fully there. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. When you look at the middleweights, they don't get hit as hard. Well, you look at the st also the reason you become rich is because people watch you impale yourself for their for their enjoyment. Yeah. You you're not gonna be Floyd is the greatest fighter who will that I've ever seen who will remember himself. Not he's not the greatest fighter I've ever seen. But he... You don't think he's the greatest fighter you've ever seen? No. Really? He's not the greatest fighter I've ever seen. But... Who would you put over Floyd? I would put uh, me, Muhammad Ali, over Floyd. I would put Sugar Ray Leonard over Floyd. I would put Sugar Ray Robinson over... But it's... It, over yeah, Floyd. I mean, except, except... I mean, the thing with Ali, though, is that he kept fighting way past that's the what time that so, he should have stopped that's right. completely. I didn't realize that his Parkinson's was already happening while he was still fighting. Exactly. I just assumed this happened afterwards exactly. until I saw that HBO documentary exactly. that, that Antoine Foucault did. He was talking unbelievably slow during his press conferences and he was still fighting. You, are you trying to tell me, like, I don't, I don't believe that Floyd could beat a Sugar Ray Leonard. I don't believe he could beat a, Mar, uh, a Tommy Hearns. I don't believe... 
uh, hard to say. Be the direct. So I, I'm just saying in my in hard my to say. Those are people before his era, right? And so I, I think he's the greatest but, fighter but I've he, ever seen. But he also didn't duck anybody. No, he's the greatest fighter I've ever seen. They can still remember he was the greatest fighter you ever seen. <laughs> like even Sugar Ray Leonard, who I love, blinks a lot. Does he? I like nigga. Ain't nobody taking a picture. Why you? <laughs> He just blinks. Like huh? he blinks. But but Floyd did it the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I and, and I don't care on anybody's top seven, he's gonna be on it. If you're being fair. I think most people's top three, you know. I mean he is if you, if, if, he's Mark, fifty and oh. He's never had a legitimate knockdown. So yeah. Think about that. Like when yeah, I interviewed Zab Judah, Zab feels he knocked him down because his his glove touched the ground, but it's still a debatable thing. Name me another another fighter. Sugar Ray Leonard's been knocked down. Look, okay. Let me, Tommy Hearns has been knocked let's down. Let's be clear. If you put Sugar Ray Leonard's opponents, opponents against uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather's opponents, who fought the most Hall of Famers? Yeah. Not, it's not even, I'm, I'm talking about all-time great Hall of Famers. The Hagglers, the Hearns, the Durans. Well, you got the Pacquiao's that, you know, that Mayweather fought. He's a Hall of Famer. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> hey, man, just... <laughs> no, you're right. I'm just saying, keep going. I ain't right. talk, I'm talking about the, the, the Sugar Ray Leonard's Hall of Fame resume looks like the fucking induction to the Hall of Fame. And I'm not saying Floyd, is, he's a great fighter. He's the greatest fighter I've ever seen. They can still remember he's the greatest fighter ever. Yeah. Like, but all those dudes, man, I just, I just, I watch some different shit, and it's it just, it's just, and plus the shit that Floyd says or does is smart, but it isn't what I love them for. I love them because they broke them, and which is a horrible thing to say, but they broke, they broke themselves for people's into. They were fucking my, they were modern day gladiators. Hundred percent. He ain't that. Since our last interview, Takashi has come out of prison. In the process, he told on everyone around him. Sure. We actually counted up the years. Sure. He helped give people over 70 years sure. with two other people facing life sure. sentences. You had a quote, uh, one of our last interviews, how, you know, when talking about Takashi, he said, everyone want to be black until the police show sure. up. Sure. There's nothing new under the sun. So whatever incarnation this takes, it is unfortunate. Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Everybody wants to be a nigga till the police show up. Everybody does. That's great and fun. And now you'll see. Now he's out. He's actually rapping about snitching. Sure. We've never seen this in our lifetime. No. In any musical no. genre, any entertainment genre, really. Snitches don't get stitches, they get immunity from prosecution. Yeah. And then they trend. Yeah. He had nearly the number one song in the country. Sure. He was literally arguing with Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande sure. saying that his song should be number one. Sure. He comes out and does a song about snitching and shooting people. It, it says more about who we are. As a society, or not even wait, because I'm not I'm not listening to this dude. Right. But who society is and what they hold dear. And what they what they listen, I ain't a murderer, I'm not a criminal, that ain't my bag, I don't that ain't my get down. But although it used to it used to be a blood. But but even at that, I don't respect people who say one thing and do another. This whole shit, this whole thing you said you was, turns out you ain't, and now how you you're rapping about how you ain't ain't that, but people still fuck with you. I don't I don't understand. Well, that. who are the people that fuck with them? Well, it gotta be forty million people because they they. I think I think it's young kids. I think it's girls. Uh, I think it's you know like that girl who realized she was living next door to you know and did the TikTok right. with the little white girls and oh my god, Takashi's living next to me. Those are his fans. It's it's three hundred and fifty million Americans. Yeah. Well, but those numbers are also worldwide. Yeah, but the fact that he can do so well here and he believes that infamy is better than fame. Yeah. Yeah. 
Infamy is better than fame. It is. You'd he, rather be infamous than famous. No, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> He's infamous and still famous. Yes. And it ain't hurting one bit. He's more infamous than he ever was famous. And because he's infamous, he'll do better. Yeah. Uh, I don't feel it. I don't like it. He literally... Because it's one thing to say, look, I was just trying to be an artist. These guys came and extorted me. They right. forced me to do all this right. stuff. They... I. I you know, all I want to do is do music and I got caught up and, and they threatened my family and I had nothing to do with it. And and at the point that I felt I had no other options, I went to the police yeah. as an escape. This is not what happened no. here. No. He was the ringleader of all this. Yeah. He was the one that was pushing these guys to do all these illegal activities. He was putting hits out on people. Same thing that Tiger King is in jail for right now, doing 20 something years. Sure. And no one even got shot at in the Tiger King situation. He's doing 20 years. In the Takashi situation, Chief Keith got shot at. And he's on video putting money on this guy's head. Yeah. And he told on that guy who's facing a bunch of years, and now he's out. He was he was getting people robbed. He was causing a bunch of chaos. And now he's out. And everyone that was doing things on his behest is now in prison doing football numbers. Infamy is better than fame. Like, like, like this, this kind of turns my stomach when I really think about it. People are like, why are you going so hard on Takashi? Is this personal? No, it's not personal. It's that it's just foul behavior from a human level. Infamy is better than fame. Like, look at all the shit that the infamous people do. It's people that did pornos and now are doing family shows. You feel me? You feel me? Infamy. Kim Kardashian? Is infamy is better than fame. It's better. It's more resonant. It's deeper. It's people remember it. They are it's salacious. It's more attractive. People get it. No, I mean, listen, I've I've made a career off interviewing infamous people. Like, sure. I'm I'm not I'm not sitting here right. on a on a on a high pedestal saying, oh, this is all bad. Right. Clearly I've 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 done a lot of these interviews and they've become some of our biggest interviews. Like, you know, Keefe D, who was right. in the car when Tupac got killed, is one of our biggest interviews. This guy's not famous, he's infamous. I get it. I get it. But Takashi also pled guilty to pedophilia. <laughs> do you know about this whole part of the story? Yeah. And and you, look at what we do to pedophiles in America. We make them priests. We make them R&B singers. We make them Boy Scout leaders. We make them senators and presidents. Well, we don't make them because they're pedophiles. They just happen to be in those positions me, and, me, and are there, pedophiles on the down low. No. There should be things that exclude you from being certain things. Those things, whether, listen, everybody knew what R. Kelly was before the video came out, before the documentary came out. Did it stop him? No. Everybody knows what priests are before those fucking before eons and eons of testimony. Did it stop him? No. Everybody knew what Donald Trump was. Did it stop him? No. So I don't I don't understand how we're even Boy Scouts of America had allegations of fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. So when is it that we decide that certain things are make you uh, exempt, that, that you are you precluded from being certain things? If you've done these things, more, devil worshipers, Satan worshipers have a higher standard uh, than most Christians. Look at look at look at the tenets of Satan worship and what they won't allow, and then look at what Christians, people who call themselves Christians, do. Look, at, I'm not even, I'm just don't even before you freak out, people, ow. Oh! Look at what, what you can't do in Satanism, like what you can't do anymore, but like what you're kicked out of the church for and can't do anymore. And look at the things that I allow born again, uh, born again evangelist Christians, saved, died in the world Christians, that they allow. Yeah, I can't say that I'm familiar with the Satanist uh, <laughs> rules and regulations. Look, I'm, I'm, <laughs> let me tell you something. If you look up Satanism right now, Look up, look up Satanism right now, and the thing they you can't the church that you can't do. 
that you can't do and be a member of the of the uh, of of that community. You can't do it. Yeah, I don't know. I guess being born again, you could pretty much do whatever you wanted right. to do before you accept Jesus. Touch a child being Satan worship. You can't do it. Mm. But you can be a born again Christian. You That's can, what you're yeah, <laughs> so I'm just like like I'm literally before we finish this interview, while you're looking at up, look at the things you can't do. Yeah. Well, uh since our last interview, Bill Cosby was locked up. Sure. He actually has done more time than Takashi. Sure. And it's interesting how, like, for example, Lunell, she interviewed uh, John Amos for us. Mm. And John Amos has worked with Bill Cosby before. Sure. He said he's not surprised. How do you feel about him being locked up like this? What he did to his wife and his children, the embarrassment and the, and the shame. You reap what you sow. That's all I can say. You reap what you sow. Were you surprised about it? No, I wasn't terribly surprised mm -hmm. because I, you know, being an actor and having worked with him a couple of times, we we'd done the movie together. Uh, we I'd done an episode or two of his show. We'd heard the rumors. I'm not surprised. Right. But you, know, we've we've had that conversation. We've had that conversation. I, I'm not surprised. Here's the thing I will say. If you're going to let people go because they're worried about COVID, I don't think that Bill Cosby's sentence should be a death sentence if that was the, the if that was a predicate for letting all of these other people go, then that should be the predicate here. Yeah. You think Bill Cosby will die in prison? I think that if we're letting people go who have done these heinous things, and uh, Takashi being one of them, um, then I think that that by that standard, he should he deserves the same grace they do. Right, because for example, uh, Big Meech's brother Southwest T just got out from BMF, and I just interviewed one of the head guys from BMF. The government convicted him when he took a plea deal because they moved two hundred fifty million dollars worth of cocaine over the course of a few years. Imagine this, the destruction that $250 million worth of cocaine did on the inner city. The crack babies, the addicts, sure. the, the, the communities like Baltimore that have never recovered, sure. that are still boarded up for sure. blocks and blocks sure. like that. This guy's out. Yep. Takashi put hits on people. He's out. Bill Cosby's still in prison. And and it's interesting because Big Meech is still in. Because I feel that when it comes to these types of things, the bigger your name is, the harder it is to get out. Yeah. They're trying to make an example out of you. Well, you're more dangerous to the society. We hold our entertainers and our athletes up to a higher standard than we do our businessmen and our politicians. 100%. Like, like... Because your collar is white, your crime wasn't as impactful. Let me, right. I'll tell you this. Well, although Harvey Weinstein got, what, 30 years or something like that? Well, well he got it. We Let's see what happens. Let's see what no. happens. <laughs> he might get out because of coronavirus. I do, I, we believe, for some reason, that the, the methodology you use to commit a crime is more redeemable. But I guarantee you could take all the bank robberies that ever happened in the, in American history, and they wouldn't even rival what happened in that Ponzi screen, scheme or what happened in the mortgage crisis or what happened. They just couldn't. They just, and so we have a perverted view of what really harm to a community is. Well, a lot of people have passed since our last interview. Sure. A little Richard. Sure. Just passed. That, I, I love Little Richard, but when he said he wore makeup because they wouldn't let <laughs> When Little Richard what, said what, that... What did he say? He basically said he had to wear makeup because they wouldn't let him sing because they were worried about the little white girls that would try to... I'm like, no, nigga, you just wanted to wear makeup. That's... <laughs> well, remember, he was gay, and then at one point he said he wasn't gay anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. But... <laughs> I mean, you're a tremendously talented dude. Yeah, and and you were the single biggest influence on Prince. I get it, but don't sit up and tell me you only wear makeup because yeah. they wouldn't let you. 
And trust me, they was not worried about you fucking their daughters. <laughs> their sons, baby. That... <laughs> he set up his store. I was like, shut up, Richard. <laughs> so one of the worst things I was at this place, it was in, uh, it was uh, Aunt Kizzy's back porch in Marina Del Rey. Years ago, it was a dope soul food joint. Everybody used to go. Me and my son Kyle, who was a baby. Now Kyle's 31 now, so he was a baby. Richard, Richard, little Richard was there. Mm -hmm. And this nigga said some flirtation shit to me in front of my son. I'm like, hey, motherfucker, hang on a minute now. Wait, little, little Richard trying Richard. to hit on you. Oh, yeah. Because you know I'm dope like that. Like, Because <laughs> it's a compliment in a way. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? What did he say? I don't even remember, but it was some flirtation shit. And I'm like, this is my fucking son. I, it was, he was like, my son was like a year and a half, two years. And little Richard, and next time I, next time I saw him, he was like, and the door only swings one way. Nah, nigga, not on Saturday. <laughs> he didn't. He just, he said, oh, uh, that's true, that happened. Uh, Betty Wright died. Yeah. You know what I loved about Betty Wright? You, you, you're you young. So there was a song called Tonight is the Night. Remember that? Mm-hmm. So I would be on the bus, and you could tell, you know, tonight is the night about women losing their virginity. Mm -hmm. So you could tell who was fucking, but who sang the song the hardest. <laughs> so it'd be these girls, and they'd be like, tonight is the night, they'd they be singing a hard. So I thank Betty Wright for letting me know who was giving it up. <laughs> Shout out to Betty <laughs> hey, Wright. Hey, Tasha, can I hold your books? <laughs> uh, Andre Harrell died. Yeah, that's sad. That's sad. That, that, that was sad because I thought Andre Hill was dope, and then the the industry shifted um, before he got the longevity. Like, he would have been dope anyway, but he did a bunch of things that after, you know, like, he started run, running late. Like, did things that, like, weren't in the discovering music type. Uh, from that prison. But I think had he more time and the industry didn't shift it, I, I think he'd have been out there with Barry Gordy and those such. Yeah, no, I mean, he had a huge run. I mean, New Jack Swing and the kind of the melding of right. R&B and hip hop, right. Uptown Records, Mary J. Right. Lige, Heavy D. And honestly, there might not have never been a Puffy if it wasn't for Andre Harrell. Yeah, but I, I just, I think that... So, Sometimes it, it is sticking to what you do as a and, and you shouldn't be safe, obviously. He's he's he was what he was, but I just I just thought that he should have been regarded as those cats who kinda changed like Clive Davis changed music over and over and over again yeah. and, and had all these incarnations, but he kinda didn't get to make those that Yeah, many well, he had a run and he eventually I think joined Revolt working right. for, for Puffy. Right. And, it was a cool job. Right. Revolt is a non-factor, right. so you're you're part of a team that's not really shifting the culture. Right, but it, but cats he, like that, yeah, like yeah, Barry he, he had a, yeah, he had, I mean, yeah, people don't mention him in the same breath no. as a as a, you know, uh, as a Clive Davis and yeah. so forth. Uh, but I think people also have short memories. Yeah, but even as short as people's memories are, it's 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 a hell of a thing to have your feet, footprint in, in all these continual yeah. experiences. Well, and I definitely want to shout out Francisco Sabalo, who recently passed away uh, from Angola. He was yeah. a 73-year-old man who had 156 children and 47 wives. Yeah. He's also known as Big Dad or Pai Grande. Yeah. 156 children. <laughs> and he wasn't in the NBA? <laughs> Even Sean Kim is like, God damn. That's a lot of kids. Kamardi is like, shit. 156. Can you imagine that? No. No. <laughs> All in the same no. region also. You don't and know who's know related. each other? Hopefully. So you're not dating your sister on accident. Shit. Like, oh, damn you it. Got, yeah, you got it. That's a I weird fucked region. Up. <laughs> What's your father's name again? Oh, shit. Yeah, that's... Uh, who would want that many I, I, children I or wives? Why not? Why not? Hey. I think Genghis Khan had like 1,500 children or something and like you that. See, and he kept fucking the world up, too. <laughs> right. Genghis Khan started war, so he wouldn't have to be home, goddamn. <laughs> what do you think 
of the term Karen? I, I remember it was interesting because they always try, and I, I said this earlier in the interview, they're so devoid of people who have actually suffered that they're trying, always trying to approximate the R. Like, I, I remember Karen is supposed to be insulting to some people because it was supposed to be like the new N-word, right? Or like, a lot of white people thought that. Karen was a real name, nigga, it never was. But I think that there are so, people... That's that, an excellent point, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Karen, Karen was a real... Like, Karen is in the Bible, biblically. Well, nigga meant nigga, no matter what. Like, Karen meant ray of light. Like, Karen means ray of light. It was like, it was it was a, a name, and it had never been more prominent than it was in the 50s. Hmm. Okay. You know what nigga always meant? Nigga. Yeah. To hear these older white women, this, this one woman, I forgot who it was, but said that Karen is actually more derogatory than the N word. Yeah. Because sexism has been around longer than racism. Do, 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 this is this is the, the, the funniest thing in the world to me. Karen had another meaning, and I said that earlier. Would you rather hear get out of the car and, with your hands up, Karen? <laughs> or get out of the car with your hands up, nigga. I know Karen's that run shit. I know Karens that are viable members of the community. I know Karens that are well regarded. I know Karens that are loved and that are uh, that are admired. <laughs> Most niggas are just feared. So I don't think it's the same thing. And I think that the problem is that they haven't had they they haven't had these actual experiences, so they have to, they have to approximate them. Yeah. And there really hasn't been a, a slur towards white women. No. Really, ever. No. This is the first time. No. I think the, 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 the most horrible thing you could say to a white woman is that, uh, and that would re really be to her father, is that uh, <laughs> you're going to have a baby, grandbaby by a dude named DeAndre. That's why. It's hard for a white dude uh, with a granddaughter named Keisha to be at Whole Foods. That's, that's, but I just think well, there's, there's no approximation. Karen is not. It's never gonna be the the nigga or the. It's never gonna. It's never gonna have the same weight. Uh, yeah, but there's no shortage of people that are gonna complain about no, it. No, just like uh, well, you called uh, Tommy Lauren a uh, blonde bimbo. Yeah, she is a bimbo. for for uh, comparing sure. uh, social distancing to willful slavery. Sure. Did you ever see there was this one woman at a, at a rally? that said muzzles are for slaves, right. not humans, and it showed a picture of a, a black woman with a muzzle sure. on her mouth. Sure. That was just disgusting. Well, was you know like, what's disgusting to me? Social distancing, like Tommy Lawrence, was willful slavery. You ignorant bitch, willful and slavery don't go together. <laughs> if it's willful, I can't, I'm not a slave. Right, you can't call him sick that day. No, no. And and what I, what I've never understood is, imagine if it's the same thing and they equated it. Imagine uh, your daughter, your your wife is raped, your children are sold, you you're beaten to where they enter your life, and you still got to work the next day. Yeah. That's nothing like what you go through. Right. I mean. It's funny to hear white people, I don't want to put on a mask. You wore hoods for a while. I don't understand why like that. I don't get that. <laughs> There's nothing worse than slavery. I agree. Do you see? You don't have slaves or black people don't show pictures of white people to show how bad shit is for us. We never do. We never go, <laughs> look at this white person to tell you Suffering. my Suffering. Never. Yeah. Well, you got your GED. Why did you why did you not finish high school? I just was dumb. I just I shouldn't even say I was dumb, but I let people tell me I was. Hmm. Okay. Like I it, it's one of my greatest regrets is that I let people at a time when I would never let somebody have a description of me that I bought into, I did when I was young. And the, and, and the reason I have a GED is because that is kind of a real life marker of how I let somebody tell me of how unintelligent I was or how lazy I was or how dumb I was. And I wasn't, I just learned differently. 
Right, because we're sitting here in your library right now. You're telling me how you read every one of these books. Every one of these books. Uh, You're one of the smartest people I know. Then you got to get out. (laughs) (laughs) You also have one of the best vocabularies. There there was words you used in our interviews that I've had to go and look up after the fact. But the whole GED thing is interesting to me. For example, I interviewed Freeway Ricky recently. And he was doing a radio interview. And one of the guys I was on the, the interview with him said that they statistically looked at this particular city they were in. I think it was St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And when they looked at all the people that were murdered in that city, all of them did not have high school education, sure. did not have a, a degree. Sure. And Freeway Ricky got his mind thinking of like, well, there must be some sort of correlation between being smart or educated, however you want to look at it, and having the ability to talk yourself out of a situation where your life might be on the line. Uh, we, we were doing the interview. The guy was inside the studio with us uh, uh, when he said that. Uh, and he was basically saying that all the people that year had gotten killed, none had a high school diploma. And what that told me was that people didn't use their minds well enough to stop somebody from killing them. You know. Uh, they couldn't talk themselves out of the killing or they didn't handle it the right way uh, that it should have been handled. But for some reason, um, they got themselves killed. And um, it was a correlation with not having education that, that, that did that. Which you fall into as well, because you didn't know how to read until what age? 28? 28, yeah. 28, yeah. Mm. Now... There's always exceptions to the rule. Like I remember mentioning this to Willie D. Willie D didn't graduate high school. Sure. Once again, one, one of the smartest people that I know. But I feel like you guys are more the exceptions than the rule. That's the problem. More, black people are always judged by the exception, never the rule. They always go, why can't you be like him? But if I were more like him, if I were like him, then he wouldn't be him. Yeah. Everybody would be. Why can't you be like uh, Colin Powell? Why can't you be by, like Barack Obama? We're more the exception uh, than the rule. And the problem is there are some average white people that get to be very successful. Like, there's no equivalence. There's no way you could, you could look at Barack Obama and Donald Trump and see that in any way is there, uh, uh, he's clearly a superior human being, a superior intellect, a superior man than Donald Trump. But Donald Trump gets to send to the presidency. Look at the last two Republican presidents. Look at the, uh, 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 George W. Bush was an average dude that ascended high. Not not bright, not not but George he, W. Bush. Yes. Well because of his father. But but he was still an average guy. Yeah. This ascended high. What you'll notice too is that not only are the largest percentage large percentage of people that are in prison illiterate. Mm-hmm. You know what else they have? High concentrations of lead in their blood. Okay. Lead. It's funny because everybody thought when crime dropped, uh, you know, uh, they couldn't they couldn't tell what it was from. They couldn't. They thought it was all these three strikes you're out and broken window. You know. You know what? Why crime dropped? Because they took lead out of gasoline. Unleaded gas. Unleaded gas. Okay. And when there was unleaded gas, there was less lead. <laughs> Guess what? Crime dropped. Yeah, I mean, because most GED holders don't live in mansions. No. It just is what it is. No. Uh, people like to talk bad about college degrees, but on average, a college degree will bring in over a million dollars worth of revenue in your lifetime sure. over someone with a high school sure. degree. This was, you know, part of my thinking right. or the whole reparations sure. talk. Uh, I would not, there would not be a Vlad TV had I not gone to UC Berkeley. That's not a, true. Got a degree. I, I, I really, well, let me tell you. Vlad TV is as much as a technology company as it is a, a media company. You would have found somebody to give you technology. No, nah, but I learned the basics of how it works. I architected Vlad TV on the back end. It's a skill. This is why... Vlad TV is technologically superior to most of our competitors because everyone else who runs hip hop sites or media that, companies. Even at that, so say you went to UC Berkeley, okay, but you didn't have the ability to 
traverse the kind of terrain you do. Right. Which most so, of my most most of my uh, schoolmates does not, did not. Right. Right. So they did a different thing. I'm not saying they're not successful, but I'm saying in this ende endeavor, you know, I was watching Steve Jobs and Wozniak was like, "You're not even. You don't even know. You don't even know. You don't even write programming." You don't, and he yeah. said, "I, you play music. I play the band." And there are people yeah. whose frequencies are just in, they're just tuned to being more expansive than we live. Yeah, like a Quincy Jones. Sure. Who was not a great musician. No, he was a good musician. He was a good musician, but he was a great producer. I remember mean, when he won, I, 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 I bought Back on the Block. A great album. And I'm like, where the fuck did Quincy come in? <laughs> right. Like I heard everybody, but, but, but that Quincy, didn't mean, yeah. Quincy did Michael Jackson. Like it, it, it's like some people can see this and some people can see this. Yeah. And so people who can see this need motherfuckers who see that. This is true. But let's just say that there was no Vlad TV, that there was no entrepreneurial streak. Right. Then I wouldn't be sharing my fine tequila with you guys. That's right. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, to have a resume, and on that resume it says graduate of this high-end university, sure. has a dollar sign attached to it for the rest it of your does. life. As an employer, when I look at resumes, I will look at the college education first, and then I'll go through everything else. Right. And if there is no college education and there's not a lot of experience, I usually don't bother. That's And so that's most employers. That's, that's why you go to it. But look at all the people. So Microsoft wouldn't exist, right? Apple wouldn't exist. Right? Right. These are all college dropouts who run. That's what companies. I'm saying. So you, same thing with Facebook. I get it. Right. I get it. So but they, a lot of these exist. guys were already going to Harvard and MIT yeah, but, and stuff but like if that. You, if and, you if you look, I I just I just think that we we learn to do things by rote. And and these things should equate to this, and this should matter this much, and and I think that we've all learned. I know more people like you. You you gave the example how you didn't think you would have this if you didn't go to Berkeley. Mm -hmm. I know more people that have degrees that they never used than people who do. Most people never. But, but, but use you but you also are in in the entertainment field. But and I'm the just people, talking about in general. If you if you lived amongst. If most of your people that you dealt with were nine to fivers, you would not be able to okay, say I'll that. Okay, tell you what, I have how many? How many nine? Like the majority of your friends are not nine to fivers. Okay, I have. Am I right? I would say. Okay, let me give you this. Okay, I have three children and yes. a wife. All of them I pay for their education. All of them, mm -hmm. and none of them motherfuckers do what they went to school for. Okay, none of them, and none of my friends' children do that. Okay, and none of my friends. Who are not, it's a cat that writes on my show. It's a fucking molecular, molecular scientist. And he works on my fucking uh, uh, show that we have on a fucking uh, a, a digital platform. And he's a, he's, a, he's a molecular scientist. And I'm like, nigga, now he's writing jokes. <laughs> right. But there's also the exception versus the rule. If your kids did not, ha, did not, were not able to lean on dad and they, had to fend completely for themselves, I bet you they'd be using those degrees very I proficiently. I think so. Yeah, I think they I, say I they have so. them. I can't, most people I know that have, what was your degree in? Computer science. Of course, but they, you would fuck my argument up. <laughs> Which I'm using on a but daily I mean, basis. The only one, <laughs> he's the only one that uses his degree. <laughs> I wanted to go to school. Yeah, I did, you yeah, still can. Course. No. You can. No, you want to. I do. What's what's the point of it then? I don't know. Uh, Nick Cannon just got a degree from uh from Howard, I believe. Okay, that's great. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not sure why. I don't know what the fuck it does for. Yeah. Oh yeah. And here is walking across the stage, the nigga from Wild and Out. Like what? The, what's the, like? He wanted to do it. He did it. That, but that he it, he felt he could learn something out of sure. the process. No, I feel like I get. Listen, I would love to go to college to learn. Yeah. But the result wouldn't be to get a degree. It would be to... Yeah, he actually learn. got a degree. Yeah. 
he actually went through the whole probably he was flying in to the east coast every day yeah, and, and I, you know whatever I, else your brand of comedy you don't do impressions no you know there's like the funny white person voice that you do every so sure. often right but i think that's the extent of it right am i right right whereas like you see the godfrey's of the world sure. or the airy spears sure. who are just Masters, yeah. masters. Right. You know, like Jamie Fox was was on live right. recently. A master at it. How come you never did impressions? Because I'm trying to be me. Mm. Like I'm not adept at that. My, my greatest skill is telling you how I see shit. Mm. That's it. That's that's what I got. Like it's the magic trick. <laughs> like I got that one <laughs> thing. Here's the quarter, nigga. Here it ain't. That's that's my <laughs> thing. I mean, did your comedy evolve? Like, how, at what point did you feel like you really? got your own voice and got into your own rhythm? Uh, that that's, an, a, that's not like a moving target for me. So it's like never, I think that my voice is so decidedly different depending on the circumstances and what stage I'm in and what we're going through. Like when I was young, it was one way. When I was newly married, it was another way. When my kids were this way, it was another way. Now uh, having experience, like I, I have a, I got a son that, is artistic and dates white women. I got a gay <laughs> daughter. I got a, you know, a, a, a daughter. Oh, your women. daughter's gay? Yeah. Okay. So I have I have this broad continuum of experiences that wouldn't fit into the way I did things before. How, how was that conversation when she told you? Did you already know? Uh, no, I never knew. But it was... The thing that bothered me the most is how... Um, that her fear of how I would react mm. uh, plagued her more than my actual reaction. And that I had done a thing that obviously I had done something that would make her feel she was unsafe. That was hard to take. That, yeah. that I had uh, fomented this idea in her that she wasn't safe talking to me. Like, I'm her best friend. Did you already know before she told no. you? Oh, really? No. So it was a total... You know, usually parents a, say like, oh yeah, I've known since you were five. It wasn't like, a total shock, but it just wasn't something I thought about, but it wasn't, I, I can't say I was shocked, but I can also say that it, it's nothing I thought about, but like, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, I didn't freak out. It wasn't inconsistent with my idea of her. I didn't go this, I, I didn't raise it, so it was, yeah. it, it wasn't weird to me. Like when you see the whole Dwayne Wade thing sure. play out with his son right. slash daughter, right? He, he recently dyed his hair red, right, to match his I ain't son's. Shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> nigga, I want you to be happy. I'm not feeling ready. <laughs> what am I? Oh, my daughter's getting all blow up, dude. What the fuck am I doing? No, I'm not. Doing that. <laughs> You're gonna wear a dress I, yourself. I, I I accept you begin, so what the fuck gonna do? We didn't know. That's not I'm not doing it. We're going through this together. No. <laughs> I wasn't only no, not. Well, what do you think about the whole thing with, with his son? And I think really, his son is a is a child. He's what, 13? I don't care what he is, he can't go to the movie without permission. <laughs> right. He can't see a PG 13. I'm movie. not feeling ready to motherfucker. Look, I, I get it. I'm not, I'm never going to make you feel unwelcome in your home that you were raised in. Yeah. You are my son and I love you, but I'm going to be your father and make the, and call the shots till you can legally do it. It ain't a fucking jump ball. <laughs> yeah. You can't be a, like what Dwayne said, oh, he's a leader. So you can, leaders don't get dropped off to the meetings by their mama. Right. You can't fucking drive. If I, if, if the, the very same thing, if I, if I left you at home by yourself at 13 years old, I would go to jail. Yeah. And, like, I don't know about the rest of the world, but I was not sexually active at 13. You you were. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. I wasn't active as I would like to be. But right. I just, I just most, think... But most 13-year-olds are not sexually no. active. So how can you really know your sexuality before you're really sexually active? I don't know. But I think that people are, listen, I, I get it. I get, I get that you, I don't ever want my children, I would never want a child to feel the way I felt growing up and go through the things I, I went through as, as, you know, the parent-child dynamic. I would never want that to be the case. But I also ain't getting ready to pick up your banner 
and 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 make things okay that aren't. I'm still going to make you. Uh, I'm going to try to get you through this thing with as little damage as possible. I'm not feeling ready to fucking dye my hair. I'm not going to call you a... You, you can't even be called anything because it would be illegal for you to take what you needed to transition. It would be illegal for you to do it. You couldn't yeah. find a doctor At 13, to do you can't transition. That's exactly... You got you to gotta be 18, right? You, you, right. <clears throat> hey, motherfucker, till you... Right. And, 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 and honestly, I'm insulted by the idea that all it takes is a doctor and some pills to make you who you are. Women aren't that way because they uh, are just of their female anatomy. It's a whole hormonal and, and wiring and nurturing thing. Nurturing thing. So I, I'm not going, I'm not willing, I don't think anybody should be discriminated against because of who they feel like they are, or what they believe. But I also don't think they're exempt from ridicule. Hey, motherfucker, you feel like you're a chick? I got some great <laughs> jokes about that. That ain't... You don't get to right. be exempt from it. Remember, Dave Chappelle did the whole thing about the uh, sure. LGBTQ. Sure. Where he basically said that the transgenders have always like not had a sense of humor because, <laughs> over because, his jokes. Listen, if the very thing, I used to, literally, I used to want to be a fire truck till I was fucking sixteen. <laughs> I can't be a fucking fire like I'm not a fire truck. And the very hormones I took, if I were an athlete. In college, the Olympics, the pros, if I were an athlete and I took those, the, the, the hormones I needed to transition, and I just took those, I'd be disqualified. Yeah. But you get to take them. So if I, if I were Barry Bonds, I'd change my name to Bonita and fucking just... <laughs> <laughs> Win all the female... Uh... <laughs> I mean, it, don't it, they have like female UFC? I mean, like uh, trans UFC fighters know. and I, boxers and stuff I, like that. I haven't seen them, but I'll just say this: I don't think that anybody should be treated. The 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 part of the human condition is that people ridicule you for the decisions you make. Right, because I remember in one of your comedy specials, uh, you talked about the term "retard." Yeah, how people compare yeah. "retard" to the N word. Right, whereas "retard." You it's actually a something. medical condition. Right. You can go to the hospital and the doctor can tell you, I'm sorry, right. Mr. Hughley, your right. son is mentally retarded. And my son, and, my, and the doctor did, told me that about my son. Really? Like, told me that before. So, uh, how did you react when you heard that? I got a retarded son. <laughs> I didn't say, I, listen, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give, this is, this is actually happening. So, uh, when they tell you your son, you know, has the challenge and then you find out your daughter is gay and then you find out, you're like, the first thing I thought it was how your parents will always say, one day your children are going to put you through some shit. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought it was my mother cursing me. <laughs> that voodoo doll she right, had right. <laughs> finally came true. Right, <laughs> Because I stayed out late and stitched. Now I got a a, a, a retarded son and a, and a daughter likes pussy. That's what happens. But I just, I didn't, it didn't, it didn't. I just, I, I love them and I think they're dope and I'm, and I, and I'm honored to have them as my children. Yeah. And I think they're, they're pretty lucky to have me as their father. I really yeah. do. Well, what happens when these interviews come out? Do your kids watch them? Always. It's, you know what's funny? <laughs> The like, oh, dad, you're doing Vlad again. Uh, right. Damn it. The last <laughs> now he's in our house. Right. Uh. <laughs> it's always that. But the last time I did an interview was in April. And I remember we did it in April. And I was at a gig in Baltimore. And it was the whole Terry Crews thing. And me and you and TK were on the phone. <laughs> and I, all I got was a text from you. And you hit me. And I went, what the fuck happened? And you know what happened after that? All, I saw all this sit on my timeline. So I, 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 I just, I think they cringe uh, when I say anything. But as long as I'm consistent with who they know me to be, then I, I think I'm all right. What are they gonna do? Go cry in a pile of money? What are they gonna do? Get get a real job? What the fuck are they gonna do? What the fuck are they gonna do? Uh, I'm out of here. Okay. Do you ever do you ever worry? About raising the stereotypical rich kid. 
Yes, I do. You know, like you grew up poor. Right. You grew up without a plan B, right. without a safety net. Right. Your kids, knowing the type of person you are, you'll, you'll never kick them out and no. put them on the street. I won't. No matter how badly they mess up, nope. they'll always they'll have a bed in a mansion. Yeah. And I and I worry about it except for one reason. They're fucking great human beings. They don't make the decisions that I would make. They don't do the things I would do. But I'll tell you this, and this is no, I'm not even being hyperbolic. Every one of my children, I'd put against the best human beings I've ever met. They're just fucking wonderful people. Do any of them try to follow your footsteps in no. comedy? No? They're just not that funny? No, they're, they're not funny. <laughs> I got a fucking autistic kid and a lesbian daughter. That shit ain't hilarious. What you going to say, man? Richard Pryor's kids have tried to do comedy. Yeah. That 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 didn't work nah, out too well. That didn't yeah, work out it, too well. It was funny to me. Is that, but the, like, my oldest daughter is, uh, she recently got married and she is a writer. But she writes blogs about foods and dining experiences and why she's just really creative that way. My uh, da other daughter's a DJ, and my son loves white women, so. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, I'm, I'm safe. Uh, the lynching of uh, Ahmaud Arbery. Sure. We, we touched on it a little bit before. The cover-up that happened. Sure. They're now investigating the actual the DA yeah. and the police department. Sure. I didn't realize in the beginning that all this had happened a month Previously. Two months. Previously. Two months previously. Yeah. Sorry. It happened on the 11th. He had been involved in an altercation. It happened on the 23rd of February. On the 11th of February and then 23rd. And we didn't find out until recently. And I'll say this. The, the, it, it, just telling back into what we said before. I wish Trump supporters were equally as vocal. Black Trump supporters were equally as vocal about this as they were about having their feelings hurt. But you take somebody's life and then that municipality conspires to give you cover. It, it, it says a lot that the, they had a video of him getting murdered. It had been shown to one district attorney and they didn't think anything of it. Of it. Another district attorney, they didn't think anything of it. So they thought... Well, you know what? We'll release. They released it. They had their lawyer release the video. The video that that one guy took. Right. Because they were like, well, I just want to show everybody the truth. And then they'll see how fucked up are you that you believe you saw your exoneration and everybody else saw a murder. A lynching. Right. They went, what? And you know what? Every, every angle, he's still black, so I don't know why you're mad. Like, I slow it down, he's still black. <laughs> Right. And now they're arresting... The cameraman. The cameraman. Right. And I remember uh, Lord Jamar said that they try, that he tried to use the village idiot defense. Yeah. When his lawyer went on CNN and said, well, this guy barely has a high school education, right. which doesn't even say a lot for this right. region. They're trying to say this guy's too stupid to even know what's going on. And and then it wasn't it wasn't the Georgia... It wasn't the local police department. It wasn't the Georgia, Georgia Bureau of Investigation. It was the FBI that arrested him. Yep. I mean, I'm like, and then for some people to say, well, he showed, he was in a vacant, he was, he walked through a, he broke into a house. How the fuck you break into a house under construction? Yeah. And apparently that house had dozens of people walking Every, through it in the weeks leading up to it. My wife and daughter go to houses under construction all the time. I thought they were going for decorating ideas. Turns out them brides were casing the joint. Chicks are shady. I'm trying, <laughs> trying to rob it, huh? I don't know. Oh, wait, once they put this shit in, you're going to take it out. Chicks are fucking shady. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with, with these three. The three it's guys Georgia, involved so in we'll it. We'll see. Yeah? Because uh, there's a good old boy network down there. But then again, now, now the FBI is involved. And they brought in a, a black female judge. Um, which... It's not the end all and be all, but at least. I'll say this. Why is it in America that the media insists I know more about the person who was killed than the people who killed him? 
Like I know more about Ahmaud Arbery than I do the McMichaels, the murderers. Yeah. So I, I, I just, I think in America we're inclined to believe that if a black person gets killed, he had a, they had a reason to do it. Yeah. If there was no video, I personally think this would have gone down like the Zimmerman case. Yeah. Well, this is the Zimmerman case. This is the Zimmerman, Zimmerman case with a video. Yeah. Because what would happen after they shot him, it'd be like, hey, punch me in the face a bunch of times to make it look like... Uh, More than what happened with the Zimmer case in the video was no black people on the jury. Hmm. I think America, the, this, this notion, I don't think there should ever be all white juries again. I don't think there should ever be uh, secrecy. I don't think that you should be able to make these decisions in the dark without having, them, having to explain them or hold them up to reason. I don't think that... I think secrecy and anonymity in how you uh, uh, levy your ballot or how you levy your vote for guilty or how you levy your decisions, you get to you get to be where you are because you are cloaked in anonymity. And one of the reasons you what you are is because you get you don't have to explain it or or or, or, or understand it. You get to do these things in secret. You should have to live it out loud. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I was looking at my uh, Instagram feed just now, and uh, a Florida mom is charged with the murder of drowning her autistic son and blaming it on two black men. I saw it. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Susan Smith. Remember, she, two black, black men stole my kid. Like yeah. Remember, there, there's a, 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 a Kate in Central Park today. A black uh, dude a told her to, yeah, told her to... <laughs> Uh, he's trying to uh, so so you get to conjure up the specter of fear, and you get to do whatever you want. What is it about Florida? I remember watching an episode of ATL. Yeah, and there was the whole Florida man right. episode. Right, and I feel like whenever you hear something completely crazy, there's usually Florida man in the yeah. title of that. It is, or woman. I remember I talked to some of my uh, my coworkers about this, some of which had, had lived in Florida, and they said, "Well, in Florida, there's sort of a kind of a separatist kind of feeling in the state, where they feel like they're not really part of the United States right. and they're doing their own thing. This right. is why you see this type of erratic behavior." Right. But what's your take on Florida, man? Florida's very different. It's like it's, it's like it's like Texas, but with no T. It's uh, like Texas. Um, had some crazy things happen, but they get to look down on Florida. Florida, the South would be done, except if they didn't have the money from Texas and Florida. Like, and Florida's so fragmented. You go to Miami, you need a passport. Like it's all Cuban. It's like no, like it's just not even Cuban. It's Haitian. It's Jamaican. It's, yeah. It's so it's so like like it's, it's, so you go there, but then you go to Central Florida, and it's another thing. And then you go to the Panhandle, and it's another thing. Yeah, it's all of these different places, and Florida was really just rednecks until the only reason to go to Florida is Miami and fucking right. Orlando. Until co the cocaine is. business That's kind it. of built it all up. That's it. <laughs> right? Yeah, I interviewed one of the kingpins, this guy George Valdez, and he was saying before they started pushing cocaine through Miami, it was really just a retirement. Cubans, we took over Miami. Uh, with the cocaine business, literally, because Miami was nothing but a little ghost town. You know, Jewish people, older people went there to die, and prostitutes and hookers lived there. You know, we came in, all of a sudden, we're pumping. They, it was said that during my time, when I was in charge of the cartel, the Federal Reserve Bank in Miami had more money than all the Federal Reserve Banks in the country. So fuck it. Look, you, you go to Florida for Miami, Orlando, and fucking spring break. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. South Beach, Disneyland, and parties. That's really fucking it. Yeah. That's that's all. Now the COVID, but after that, <laughs> before that that's it. That's what yeah. you go for. One of, one of the most disturbing things that I've seen during this whole coronavirus outbreak was, you know, originally they say that coronavirus started in Wuhan, China. Sure. With Chinese people. Sure. And then at one point, they somehow started blaming black people in China for the spreading of it. The Chinese did. The Chinese did. Right. Where black people were not allowed in a McDonald's to the point where McDonald's had to do 
an international statement denouncing this behavior. Sure. Black people were not allowed in hotels. So it, it, the only black people there are playing in fucking basketball. That's really, that's really it. Or, or, or I mean, you have African immigrants over all there. All eight of them, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> all eight of them. But, but it's funny because then in in because China is building Africa a large percentage of African infrastructure. They are. So, they are. You know, John Sally said that China has been quietly buying up Africa and, for decades. I keep going to China every year. China keeps going to Africa. I, I said, what am I doing? You know what I'd heard? I don't know if this is true or not, but a, a Chinese close associate of mine told me about this. They're saying that the, the Chinese have been systematically giving loans to these African countries, which they ultimately can't pay back, and they're taking more and more land in different parts of Africa right. from these loans, and they're slowly starting to take over Africa. They're buying Africa. Buying Africa, essentially. That's true? That's very true. Mm. Deep. Let me tell you what else they're doing in China. On China, they show, this week in Africa, they show good stories. Mm. They show nice people. They don't show bandanas and machine guns and killers Hyenas. and kidnappers. They don't show the... the Animals jumping in your car, people getting mauled by by tigers. Right. They show the humanity of Africa. They show how wonderful these people are. They talk about how this used to be the way we were told to look at it. Because Americans, literally in their television and their films, have convinced us that they're savages. Their yeah. treatment. So the Chinese, when I was there, I saw more about Africa and China than I've ever seen in America. And they can't tell me I wasn't looking for it because I was. I have tons of African art. I've been looking. I've been into it. I changed my name back in the 80s with one of my African names. I had African American. What was African, your African name? I don't, I'm not using it. <laughs> okay, we'll just I'm leave it at that. It. But I, I literally, I was at the Shrine of the Black Madonna. I was reading books. I was. I, somebody told me, stop calling yourself an African American and call yourself an American. You know nothing about Africa. And I said, I know about Africa. He said, give me five countries and name the five capitals of the countries and tell me the language they speak. <laughs> I said, okay. And when Africa was like, hey, you get this shit together, Chad like, hey, stop kicking the niggas out. We need, we need, um, the, the Chinese got blamed. And what did they do? They have learned what everybody else learns, blame the black people. They've learned what everybody else did. Like even if even if you buy, even if you buy that uh, China was nefarious and they did something horrible, even I, I don't happen to ascribe to that notion. But even if I did buy, it, um, like Trump supporters, China did this in China. Your job as the president is their job to try to hurt America, right? Mm -hmm. it, or try to hurt uh, the country that they're adversarial with. It's your job to protect us for from it. You can't get, okay, if a country, a country, a country is trying to hurt you, they're doing what they're supposed to do. They're not, not supposed to try to hurt you. You're supposed to try to stop them. That's like, if somebody is a bully, they're, gonna, they're not only going to stop fucking with you when you make them. And so I think China and China, like, if, you know what I, I, no matter what you language, uh, 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 region, no matter what, Everybody knows how to say nigga. Everybody. Sign language, I don't care. There's a way to say that derogatory term everywhere. And there's a way people see them everywhere. And so China just learned, blame it on black people. Yeah. And uh, apparently a lot of African countries are actually doing the same thing. Sure. They're now kicking out Chinese people like Nigeria and so yeah, forth. Yeah, of course. Right? Okay. <laughs> right, right. You get it, but you get it. With it. And, 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 they need Africa more than Africa needs China. I have a man go on Instagram, you know, go on an interview and say, you know, not enough, a married man say, not enough women DM me. I, I, you know, my, my wife seems to get all the attention. I wish that more women would DM me to want to have sex with me just to make me feel better. Yeah. <laughs> think about, think about what would happen in that yeah. situation. Yeah. There is a double standard. I don't even like my world. girlfriend to say shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there is a double standard. And at the end of the day, 
men will usually get the brunt of it. Yes. That's just how it is. It's how it's always been that way. And as a man who more times than not has a dominant place in society, sure, sure. you have to put up with it. Right. Right. I'm not crying about it. Right. But it's there is a double standard. Yeah. Women, women want equality, but how many women want to pay the check no. at dinner? No. No. That's true. Since last time, what do you think were the, the great stand-ups that you've seen? Would you put the Chappelle's? Oh, of course. Chappelle's is always going to be great. I didn't like his first few, but the last the last one that he did was, well, was brilliant. I, I like the first few better than the last few. Oh, really? I like the last one. The one that he went one, over, the whole Michael Jackson stuff and yeah, all that. I, I think I, he really pushed but it. But I don't think it's a, like, it's a couple of things I've never seen somebody do. Like, I've never seen Chappelle do a bad special, and I've never watched John Legend do a bad song. I've just never, okay. <laughs> I want it to happen, it just hasn't. But who's great? Do you know Seinfeld? Stand-up was great? It's not my thing, but he's not technically he's a great stand-up. Like, yeah. like when you look at the kind of- the Crowd control. Like the, the, yeah. the, the structure of stand-up, he was great. Uh, obviously Chris. Chris I like, Rock? I like, yeah. I, I like Deion the, Cole, he made me laugh a lot. Dan I like Cole's a dope. cat named David Arnold. He made me laugh a lot. Um, I like uh, Aida Rodriguez. She was on Aida, Aida Rodriguez. She was on Tiffany Haddish's thing. She's okay. fucking yeah. hilarious. They made like they made me so laugh. They made me laugh so much. I had to stop it, go get a <laughs> drink, and get ready to get mad again. That's how much they made me laugh. Yeah, shout out to Tiffany, man. Yeah. She really came up. She did. As someone who started out in foster homes. You want to talk about right. being at the bottom? Right. Doesn't get much worse than a foster home. Right. Who passed that lotto ticket out? <laughs> 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 Didn't you see it? You, you, you I see feel girls you. tripping in the end. Yeah. You know, last question. You've been doing this for a long time, sure. but you spend a lot of time touring, uh -huh. doing shows, uh -huh. and so forth. That has ground to a halt. Yes. Now, you are financially established. Right. You were not living paycheck to paycheck up I'm to not. the point of this. So no. you're okay. But as a whole, when you look at your community of comics and live entertainers, when there is no timeline for live shows anymore, and most comedians, they make 95% of their money that way. Is that, is that a fair sure. statement? Sure. You know, you got the Kevin Hart to do you right. know movies and so forth, but that's a very small it tiny is. piece of people. It's like group Kevin of people. Hart. Yeah. It's like Kevin Hart and that's right. it. Right. <laughs> Pretty much. You, yeah, who else <laughs> he does every fucking movie. He does movie, every so, movie. Yeah, yeah. Jumanji. Right. Everything. What type of effect for your community of comics is this coronavirus having? Well, when you ask me what type of effect is the coronavirus having in my community? I would ask you about yours too. I would ask you about news. I would ask you about news is okay. Uh, I I think that mm -hmm. it has shown us that some aspects of the way we live are unnecessary. More people are going to be working from home. Yeah. More people are going to be reticent to go see live events. Um, we can now have shows without a live audience, but you've already done that, so it's not. You know what I mean? So it's recalibrating the way people see things. But the one thing that's true. Stand up, the art has survived two war, war, wars, famine, floods, fires. I don't think that everybody is going to survive. Obviously, that that would be a lot, but I think the art form will. How people digest it, that that might be yeah a different thing. Because it's tough, you know. All the comedians that I speak to, and I, and I know a lot, they all need a live audience to do what they do. Yeah. To do a, an IG live comedy special where you're just talking to a screen, right. mo most comedians can't even really turn up and really do right. what they do without having that, that feedback from a live audience. Right. You know, I got friends like Godfrey who do like 500 shows a year. Right. Like they're doing multiple shows every night, damn near the whole month. 
do you think is going to hurt a lot of comics? I think it's, it, it's for a while until people get say, But everything, restaurants are going to be hurt. Air, airline is going to be Hotels are going to be hurt. Cruise ships are going to be hurt. Yeah. I interviewed Russell Peters recently. He said that he's lost millions. Yeah. And I'm I, like, but you okay? He's like, yeah, but it's still the bleeding. Like, you know, the, the I'm still having to spend money and not have, you know. I assume you lost a massive amount of money, all your bookings. A very, a very, so. very decent amount of money is yeah. not coming in. Right. But you've been doing this for 30 years. 31 years. Yeah. You, you have money that you put aside. You have assets. You, you do have, and you don't. No? Like, you do, but if it's bleeding, yeah. I mean, you have a certain amount, but you also have a certain amount of blood in your body. You know, <laughs> unless somebody's pumping blood in while you're bleeding... It doesn't matter, but if there's nothing coming in, it's all going out. Right. I mean, if you're you just know, bleeding with no pumping. Then yeah, it's 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 bad. It's gonna get real bad. Uh, I'm gonna get a hurt real bad. There you go, motherfuckers. I said it. Seventy <laughs> percent of my income went away. Seventy percent. Seventy percent. Seventy percent of my income went away. Like just like that. Tomorrow. That's it. Yeah. All these shows. Because my whole books. thing was. I don't make this, but I'm gonna live off this, right? That's it. I, like I don't want, I don't want to be beholden to anybody. Yeah. So I would do that, but I, this is what I do: seventy percent of my income. And so, even now, when you're talking about going back and you're restructuring deals, they're talking about fifty percent capacity or twenty five percent capacity. Yeah. The deals aren't what they were. Exactly. And so, and it's not like you could, if you do twenty five percent capacity. In order to break even on your previous estimate, you'd have to charge four times the ticket price. Well, you it, can't. You have to do more shows. Yeah. You have to do more that, shows. That, that's the way around it. And, it's, it's, and, and the way around it also is this. And plus, some people don't want to go to shows at all. No. For, for, but there's a, there's a virtual platform that people are exploring that, that can, people could, that could buy a ticket for a particular performance, see that ticket, uh, see that performance, it times out at eight hours or 12 hours or 24 hours. And you can't transfer. You can't. You can't. Um, you can't um, transfer it to anybody, and it's imprinted, so you can't. You it, you could just see it, but I I just think that the people who are great at this are gonna are gonna do okay. Yeah. And they're gonna be people that want to. But it's just a it's a scary time. Like my wife is like, I'm I'm booked on the 11th. Yeah. At a, at a, at a joint, then I'm booked on the 18th. It's my fr I had this when I tell you this. It's the first time ever in my career I haven't been touched a microphone in three months. Ever. Yeah. And the reason I say this is as someone that's been through, this is my third economic crash yeah. as an adult. You know, the first one as an adult was the 2000s. Right. You know, dot com crash, which I got fucked up over. Right. You know, I lost, you know, I had to sell my house right. and I ended up sleeping on couches. Uh, the second one was the 2007. Housing prices, well, yeah. where I was still kind of establishing my company, right. and then now this, this is the first time that I was actually prepared financially yeah. for this happening. I had money put aside. I was able to sell off a bunch of my stocks quickly and and go liquid with them. I did not have a house with a huge mortgage. You know, all my properties were rented, so I knew okay, worst case, worst, I just got to ride out the rest of this lease, and then I can get out of it. And it's just so important. To not live paycheck to paycheck. Man, you know what? You, you, my, my wife was scared, and and I, I said, uh, it's like a generator. It's like literally having another ancillary output is like a generator. The house is off. Hit the generator. So let's go from this source to this source. Mm -hmm. That's really it. That's it. So now I'm, you know, I. I I've always done my radio show, and so now we're doing a TV show on the digital platform. And mm -hmm. We it's a rev share, so add rev share, and it's it's doing well. So it's kind of so you got to switch from the electrical to a generator, and 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 what you've learned is what I've learned is that this shit is not when you going through this for the first couple of time, you think it's 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 not ending, but it ain't. Yeah. Our parents told us all the time, save for a rainy day. Yeah. And because you live in California, you don't think it rains, but motherfucking it does all the time. Oh, yeah. No, it, it is. It is. And, you know, like, for example, you know, I, I, I've got the Vlad Stocks page. And I've always said, in one of my first videos, I said, because my, my question is, the biggest question is like, how much should I invest in stocks? 
And my answer is always an amount of money that you know you will not have to touch for years. Yep. And sure enough, when this happened, a lot of people said, I was doing okay, but then I had to cash out a bunch of stocks to pay my bills. And you're cashing them out at the very worst time. Yep. You're crashing them. When, when and things are dropping 30 40%, you're having to sell off all that right. stuff to pay off bills. And that's the last thing you want to do. Because it recovered a month and a half later. Right. Had you just left it alone, but you were living paycheck to paycheck. People were talking about, oh, I'm getting my $1,200 check. Well, I want to put it in stocks. Like, you crazy right now? If right. you're getting a $1,200 check, that should be going to your bills. You better eat. Yeah. yeah. Because... You know, at, at, my, at my salary, I don't, I didn't get any $1,200 checks. Neither did you. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone told me that, like, okay, yeah, learn how to move your money around. But if you're getting a $1,200 check, that should be going to your rent, to clothes, to food, right. to electricity, and so That's, forth. They give it to you. They gave it to you. It's stimulus. They want to stimulate the economy, not your bank account. Not right. Your, yeah, they, it's, not, it's not to buy a pair of sneakers. Right. It's not, it's yeah. not to, to gamble on. Is to pay the essentials. Yeah. And that twelve hundred dollars didn't go very far. Not what well, they, they if it did, they wouldn't be having to do another one now. They're doing another one now. Uh, what do you like to me it's just it's interesting because I've never seen so much fear and reticence. But I'm I'm really glad to live in a in a place, in a state where I think they're overly cautious about a lot of stuff. Yeah. But in the end, I think one of their major concerns is people. I see a lot of places where they're like, fuck these people. Yeah, like, the lieutenant governor of Texas said there's more important things than living. Right. Only that a, came out of his mouth. Only a white dude would say some shit like that. <laughs> I'm te only, I, I, I don't think black people should ever risk their lives for the economic prowess of the United States of America because our ancestors already did it. I don't think we should ever do it again. And I, I, I don't think, I think that the old people, are, old people are dying, black and brown people are dying, people in prisoners, people in prison are dying, people in uh, meat packing plants are dying. America's made the, art, the estimation that these lives are very important. And so we'll sift through these lives. How does 100,000 people die? We don't even have a day of mourning. Yeah, we don't even like every night. There should be a, a, a national day of mourning. Well, people can't even go to funerals. No, because you see what happened. There's these cases where like some older person in a family will die of coronavirus, right. and everyone will show up to the funeral, and then like five other people in the family die, and three other people are in the yeah. hospital, and it's it's fucked up. You know what's fucked up about America? This is the the, the saddest commentary of this time right now. Old people want to fucking live. Mm -hmm. They want to live. They want to get old as fuck. But you know what we're telling them? You don't matter. You yeah. don't ever see anybody sad. When we hear about somebody dying, it's an anomaly. It's, he was he was 30 years old or 40 years old. Or we hear that there was somebody getting an iPad. But 80-year-old people, oh, they were old. They, 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 yeah. they had a pre-existing condition. I don't give a fuck what you got. You want to live. I mean, since our last interview, my dad died. You know, me and you were contact, in contact during that time. Uh, he was 84 years old. He died of Parkinson's. And uh, the one thing that really blew me away was in his condition, you know, with a breathing mask on, not being able to stand up by himself, having someone feed food to him, you know, getting, you know, at one point he had a, he was fed through a stomach, you know, through a tube right. in his stomach. And he still wanted to live. He he never got depressed. You know, I said, you know, do you want to keep going? He said, of course. Of course <laughs> motherfucker, yes. Going. Yeah. Like, it yes. wasn't like, I, I can't do this anymore. Right. Just, just tell him to, to you know. Um, and it wasn't until he went back on the respirator that I finally had to say, okay, we're yeah. going to have to do not resuscitate. He didn't have, he didn't, he didn't sign the DNR. He, he, you no, did. No, I, I, had, I had to, yeah. I mean, it, it fucked me up. Like, yeah. it, it fucked me up having to do it, but we knew that he wasn't going to make it out of... Everything wants to fucking everyone live. Everyone wants to live. And, and you know what the thing about it is? We're telling them that because you're this and we think this is important, yeah. you don't give a fuck if you live. Yeah. 
they, oh, you, you've lived long enough. Right. What's long enough? <laughs> Make way for the living. Right. Nah, we need this bed for, for a... People are dying in old... A 40-year-old. Because you know what? The places that people are dying the most are the people who are, who are employed at don't give a fuck about. Like the employee... People work at old folks home, they don't really give a fuck about them people. I ain't yeah. saying there's nobody there that does. No, I, I've dealt with these homes. I, I've had to scream on some people, like, you know, my dad's last days. The, the, yeah. People work in prison. They don't, they don't give a fuck about yeah, them. Fuck. People work at meatpacking plants. So the, the places where people are dying are managed and and and, and empl the, the employees don't give a fuck about the people who are in their care. Yeah. They, they, I'm going to wheel a machine out that had COVID patients in there and put it. Nobody gives a fuck. And it's always like, look how a COVID case will run rampant through a nursing home. Yeah, it'll run rampant through prison. It'll run rampant through a meatpacking plant. Nobody cares. Cause nobody gives a fuck. Those are all the people that are warehouse. Yeah, those are minimum wage workers. We don't give a fuck about them. Uh, immigrants. They don't care. And so if it is eighty year old, ninety year old people, they live long enough. You know, it's it's people in meatpacking plants. It's people, it's, it's people on ships. Yeah. It's like floating cans of disease. We just don't <laughs> floating cans. I don't give a fuck. Disease. Tell them Charlie sent you. We don't, <laughs> they don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that and that's what really, you know, seeing my dad pass was the first time I really got to see the process of somebody dying. Yeah. Face to face. Yeah. On a daily basis, yep. seeing him every day, talking to him every day, I had to take over his care because my mother was doing some bullshit. And uh, I don't think no son should ever see his father die. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. You know what's funny? Tough. My wife. It was funny because my wife is like, "You, you, he would want to be. He would want you there, and you should be there. And you're gonna be sorry if you're not there." No, I wouldn't have been. I should have never seen that. No man should ever watch his father leave. I, so you, I, you saw your father die also? Yes. Oh, he died I'm, in your arms, yeah. And I'm like, I'm, I, why would I? No. That's not That's not the... Women, I, I don't know what it is, but they take a different, at least in my estimation, they take a view of that, that they, they're like, you would have been so sad if you... No, I could have lived without that. And, 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 and I remember at one point he was like, like, get out of here. Like, he didn't want me to see him like that. Yeah. So I, I just I just think now we're going through a thing where we're losing where we're losing our history. Like we're losing the floor and the ceiling. We're losing this this people who could be and the people who have been in equal numbers and we don't understand what that's doing to us. Yeah. It's a sad time. We're losing our future and we're losing our past. And people are like, oh. I would take some of these old people for some of these motherfuckers we got right now. Or some of these people in prison who come out and make some of these life or these people we have right now. Or some of these hard working people and these fucking plants and people we have now. Yeah. The people who are partying, who have these pool parties right now. Let them go. Yeah. Natural selection. Fuck you. You yeah. clearly are not smart enough <laughs> to be on this planet right, right now. Right. <laughs> You should not reproduce. Right. Cancun is just full of... <laughs> you see these, is... pack, these packed parties. Right. These packed parties in every part of the country. Every race of person. Right. Like... Cancun is Spanish for funeral home. We don't give a fuck yeah. what it is. Yeah. And like I said, I think to a certain degree, it's like... You probably should not make children. You are going nope. to pass the stupidity down to your kids. I'm actually kind of happy you're doing this. I'm, I, I am sad that you're probably going to go home and get your grandparents sick. Yeah. That part I'm sad about. But you right there, man, my, my, who, who, my, my, you're in a pool with 500 other people right now? It's, and old people, you can't tell them shit. Like my grandpa, my wife's father lived with us. The whole thing. They had an argument. This motherfucker gets mad. He want to go back to his old folks home. Now they got COVID on the eighth floor. Mm. But now she can't, he can't come back here. Oh, well, yeah. Because he can't leave his apartment. She can't take her food. I'm like, if you'd have set your old ass here, but son, 
a lot of old people getting it because they won't stop being assholes. Just, <laughs> they want, and I'm telling you, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, we we have this one guy uh, that's been on our show a couple of times, Doctor Khan. He's a he's a hospitalist in Las Vegas. Right. He deals directly with coronavirus patients, and he just texted me today to say that one of his coronavirus patients tried to commit suicide. The stress of going of going through this makes them want to kill themselves. Yeah. The the level of mental and emotional trauma that this is going to leave behind is going to be immense. And not work. This is what I don't think people are taking a measurement of. We couldn't have stopped Corona from coming. It, we lead the world in deaths and cases. That's a lack of leadership. There would 100%. have never been another president in the history of America that would have fell asleep at a switch like that. Nobody. Yeah. I don't give a fuck who I don't give a fuck who what you believe, what you don't believe. No one. This is not the first disease or potential pandemic that knocked on our shore, that, that that landed on our shores. It was the first this this it was ripe for this. Yeah, I mean Trump is pushing to reopen the states. He's arguing with the governors. Say hurry up and reopen. But he can't. I'm gonna if they don't open the church, you can't make motherfuckers open. You can't yeah, like churches being essential services. I mean, listen, I, I'm an atheist, so I'm probably not the, the right person to listen to this, but still, like you posted something brilliant <laughs> on, on your yeah. Instagram. He said <laughs> he said, until they open up the White House, we are going to keep this church closed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when the White House has visitors. That's when we'll open our church back. People, more people have gotten COVID at churches than bars, because bars are closed. Mm. And you ain't, and there's no, you ain't gonna, you can't just make them open a fucking bar, but you can make them open a church. You can't just have a fucking benediction at Applebee's. You can't just do it. But, but the fact that people, God, didn't say that you have to risk your life when you got, if I gave you technology, chances are you could still fellowship with people without being around. But the idea, I, like, who would have thought that that fucking happy hour is, is, is safer than fucking Sundays? Yeah. And then you have, uh, you have these preachers who, want everyone to donate their $1,200 checks oh, to the church. Oh, you're such a fucking mind. <laughs> the only people helping... The, the only people that really are, are happy about social distancing is altar boys. They're like, this motherfucker got to stay six feet away. <laughs> yes. And I'm not getting molested today. <laughs> That's I've, I've never felt so safe in church. <laughs> Go coronavirus. <laughs> uh, oh, we're gonna end it with that. <laughs> I, I hope I hope this lasts long enough for me to become an adult. <laughs> Two on, more man. years till I'm 18. <laughs> right. DL Hughley, man. Always a pleasure. Likewise, uh, thank man. you for inviting me into your home this time. Always, man. Come on, let's go get something to eat. Yes, sir.